From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tonight, reporting from San Francisco. Good evening. There seem to be two schools of thought. Those who can't believe that U.S. security in the Soviet Union has been compromised to the extent which has been reported, and the one that insists this scandal will continue to get bigger. Today, the evidence suggests that it is getting bigger. Yet another Marine has been arrested and accused of working for the Soviets, this time in Leningrad. And once again, sex appears to have been a factor. Our first report is from ABC's Dennis Trout. Investigators say one of five Marines guarding the U.S. consulate in Leningrad helped Soviet agents penetrate the building in 1982. It's not yet known what material might have been compromised. 26-year-old Sergeant John Joseph Wyrick, now in the brig at Camp Pendleton, is alleged to have helped the Soviets in part for love, but perhaps for money too, while assigned to the Leningrad guard detail for a year starting in November 1981. He is suspected of espionage and related offenses. Pentagon sources say once again those related offenses refer to women. They say Wyrick has admitted to investigators he had a sexual involvement with a Soviet woman and she persuaded him to help spy for the enemy. Wyrick had embassy duty in Rome after his assignment to Leningrad, so investigators also are looking into what might have been compromised there. And while the exploitation methods appear to be similar, Pentagon officials say the Wyrick case is not otherwise related to charges against two other Marine guards alleged to have spied for the Soviets, Corporal Arnold Bracey and Sergeant Clayton Lone Tree. The Soviets are not making the situation any easier now. Washington wants to send in replacements to reshape the guard force in Moscow. But for a full week, the Soviets have been refusing them visas. Dennis Trout, ABC News, Washington. This is John McWethy. In his first real public comment on the growing Marine Guard Embassy scandal, Secretary of State Schultz said the buck stops at his desk. I'm responsible. It is a clear, clean chain of command. Responsible though he may be, Schultz admitted he still has few answers to why security was so bad at both the old embassy and the new one that is still under construction but may have to be torn down because of Soviet bugs. Kremlin espionage, Schultz said, will cast a heavy shadow on his talks next week in Moscow. They can't expect to continue incessantly, massively, to work to create a hostile environment for our people overseas without cost to themselves and to their relations with us. So why not cancel his trip to the Soviet Union? They are not going to run us out of our embassy. We can provide a proper environment necessary for the conduct of my talks. We're going to do it. Soviet spokesman Vladimir Petrovsky today accused the U.S. of trying to sabotage the talks. George Schultz was incredulous. They invaded our sovereign territory. And we're damned upset about it. Two members of Congress who returned late today from Moscow said the situation at the embassy is so bad that it could take five to ten years to clean it up. And on Capitol Hill, Senator Robert Dole introduced a bill to allow the death penalty for anyone convicted of espionage. One reason Schultz wants to go to Moscow is to assess the damage for himself, to look at the Russian listening devices implanted in the walls of the embassy, to talk to the staff and to warn the Soviets that an escalating war of espionage will serve the interests of neither side. John McWethy, ABC News, the State Department. Like many people in the country, we've wondered what effect all these embarrassments for the Marines have had on the Marine Corps morale. We asked our Pentagon correspondent, Bob Zelnick, to check it out. Pride. It is written into a column of Marine officers marching at Quantico and into a recruit graduating class at Paris Island. It is a pride born of classic discipline and the physical strength and determination to overcome all obstacles. It is a pride used cleverly by the Marines to recruit civilians, as in this television commercial. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. With a medal to be Marines. And it is the reason most say they joined the Corps. It's a great test of manlyhood, great test of uh of uh, personal integrity and honor. But in recent years, that pride has suffered a series of shattering blows. In Beirut, the Marines failed to protect their own barracks from terrorist attack, and 241 were killed. Oliver North, the very embodiment of the gung-ho Marine, became the central figure in the Iran-Contra scandal.
and in the Soviet Union, at least three Marine Embassy guards may be charged with espionage, while there and elsewhere others have come under a cloud. The Corps' leadership concedes personal transgressions, but no crisis in morale. We don't think it's the end of the world. We think those are individual actions and they're not reflective of the, the Marine Corps as a whole. So far, there's no shortage of Marine Corps volunteers. Recruiting targets are being met all over the country, and 98% of all new recruits have high school degrees. Marine Corps morale survives because the Marine Corps mystique survives. The new Marine thinks he's joining an elite fighting force, and by the time he's finished training, he's sure of it. And at the training camps themselves, there's little outward evidence that things are amiss. Take that classroom instruction and put it to use. We're gonna, where the rubber meets the road. And put it to use they do. Men and women testing their skill with machine guns, firing rocket grenades, coordinating artillery fire, preparing, in other words, for what the Marines do best, leading the charge in combat, Casting not policing embassies or furnishing token forces with no apparent mission, as in Lebanon. Um, as far as the, uh, some of the, the tragedies you spoke of, I, am, for one, don't believe that it was necessarily purely a Marine uh, uh, shortcomings. So Marine pride, while bruised, rebounds, while the men themselves remain most at home with obstacles they're trained to handle. Bob Zelnick, ABC News, Quantico, Virginia. One other note about Soviet-American relations. The Soviets released a picture today of American defector Wade Roberts and his girlfriend Petra Neumann. They are standing in Moscow's Red Square. The Soviets announced last week that Roberts had defected and that asylum had been granted to the American soldier and his West German girlfriend. He is the first American soldier to defect to the Soviets since the Vietnam War. Later in tonight's broadcast, confirmation hearings for William Webster as director of the CIA and his role in investigating the Iran affair. A new study on the effectiveness of the anti-cancer drug interleukin-2. And another entertainer who wants to be the mayor. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings in San Francisco. Brought to you by Advil. Bring in the drafting table next. You know what it means to start your own business. A lot of work and some big headaches. But I don't take aspirin or Tylenol anymore. Today I take Advil. Fact is, Advil has a non-prescription strength of the medicine in the prescription brand Motrin. Doctors have already recommended Advil over 5 million times for so many types of pain. So today it's Advil. Business is tough enough. I don't want to compete with a headache. Advil. Look for a special Advil coupon in Sunday's paper. Tell all the world. That label stands for quality. It stands for fashion. And it stands for America. And that's why it matters. So ask for and buy made in the USA. Tell all the world. and make your American dream come true. We're the nationwide real estate company that can help make your American dream come true faster and easier. The new ERA. When President Reagan nominated Judge William Webster be the new director of the CIA, it was widely assumed that besides his qualifications, he had not been involved in the Iran affair. At his confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill today, the question was, did he investigate quickly enough the Iran affair? Here's ABC's Ann Compton. William Webster enjoys a squeaky clean reputation as director of the FBI. But to his confirmation hearing to be director of Central Intelligence, Webster brought something else, an FBI memo that casts a cloud over the early handling of the Iran investigation. I'm aware of a recommendation brought to my attention on or about October 30, 1986 to withhold certain information from Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North of the National Security Council. Webster said the FBI memo warned against sharing routine intelligence information because North might become involved in a future criminal investigation by a special prosecutor concerning Central America. He acknowledged the FBI was cautious around North. He was a uh, a very gung-ho person, very tunnel vision, uh, rather result-oriented. But there was just some general concern that something foolhardy might take place without the proper uh, scrutiny by others who might have a more balanced judgment. Webster insisted he had forgotten about the memo and the warning about North. The senator said they were stunned. That's serious business. And that when the FBI director reads it, uh, he ought to note it. 
and he ought to tell the Attorney General about it, and maybe he ought to tell the President about it. Uh, this language just can't be blown away. Why, they asked, did not Webster or the Attorney General send FBI agents into the White House just three weeks later to prevent any shredding of North's files as Meese prepared to make the Iran-Contra connection public? Neither of us saw this as a criminal inquiry. Senators were clearly unhappy about the handling of Iran, but they heard just what they wanted on the touchy issue of covert CIA operations. Webster pledged to keep Congress fully informed or quit as director of the CIA. The senators said, after one more day of hearings, Webster is certain to be confirmed. Ann Compton, ABC News, Capitol Hill. The select committees of the House and Senate investigating the Iran affair have reached an agreement with the White House on looking at President Reagan's diary. Congressional investigators have wanted access to see if there is any new information. Now the White House counsel will review the diaries and make excerpts available after the president sees them. In medical news today, there is a new cancer study which has been published in today's edition of the New England Journal of Medicine, which is the largest ever done on the controversial drug interleukin-2. The drug works by encouraging the body's own immune system to fight the cancer. The question is, how well does it work? Here's ABC's George Strait. In the experiments done two years ago with the drug interleukin-2, 25 terminally ill cancer patients were treated. Almost half saw their tumors shrink. One had a complete remission. Today's report involving 150 patients shows only 25% with partial tumor shrinkage and eight complete remissions. I think these are encouraging initial results which indicate that a real effect has been found. Shannon Sylvester is betting her entire life on IL-2. There's one tumor that they've seen that it has shrunk, but there's still a lot that seem to have remained the same. The treatment uses a person's own immune system to fight off the cancer. White blood cells are removed and treated with interleukin-2. They are then put back into the person's body as cancer killer cells, but they're very toxic. There's liver damage, kidney failure, lung damage. Apparently, these problems disappear when treatment is stopped. But still, critics of the therapy, like Dr. Charles Mortel of the Mayo Clinic, tell ABC News that the therapy is, quote, too toxic for human beings, a bad scene. So far, the therapy's caused at least six heart attacks and four deaths, but experts say there's no reason for alarm. New cancer therapies are always toxic at first. This is a step, along with lots of other steps, that's probably going to be important. So while the theory around IL-2 has promised, because it is so toxic, there are serious doubts whether it will ever be a practical cancer therapy. George Strait, ABC News, Washington. When we come back, the AIDS crisis threatening to overwhelm San Francisco's financial and social services. In the morning, in the evening, ain't we got fun? You know, when you take a carnival cruise, all your shipboard fun is included in the price. All your nighttime entertainment's included. All your food's included, too. Plus, fantastic tropical ports of call. And you know what all this costs? A lot less than you think. Even your airfare's included. Take a three, four, or seven day cruise on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. Once upon a time, before new soft scour pads, I had to buy two pads for dishes, plastic pads too soft for dried on food, and steel wool pads toothed up and scratchy for delicate surfaces. But new soft scour is just right for all these dishes. Soft scour is different. Soft enough for China. Tough enough to scrub as clean as steel wool without scratching. You can live happily ever after, too, with just new soft scour. Now, colorful stain and tough polyurethane protection in one. Poly shades by Minwax for a beautiful finish in half the time. Minwax makes wood beautiful. In a new survey, we asked a thousand doctors if stranded in the middle of nowhere would they want Tylenol, Extra Strength Tylenol, Advil, or Bayer. Doctors chose Bayer, three to one over Extra Strength Tylenol. Bayer, the wonder drug that works wonders. And now a real crisis for San Francisco. It was big news here this morning. The AIDS epidemic, said the headlines, is spreading so rapidly that it threatens to overwhelm San Francisco's financial ability to deal with it. Some information from our fact file. There are more cases of AIDS among gay men here than anywhere else in the country. 
Some doctors believe that 50% of the gay population is walking around with the AIDS virus. At least 15,000 men are expected to die in the next four years. Twenty years ago, San Franciscans called it the Summer of Love. From all across the country in the 1960s, thousands of young people came here to protest the war in Vietnam and bend their minds with LSD. They were the flower children, and they invented acid rock. When Vietnam was over in the mid-1970s, the flower children faded, and the gays arrived. Dr. David Smith has run the Haight-Ashbury Free Medical Clinic since 1967. It's unfortunate and ironical that we've gone from make love, not war, and the flower children of the 60s to, to AIDS in the 80s. And the, uh, there were more people died from AIDS last year in the city of San Francisco that died from heart disease. Gay men came to San Francisco because their behavior was socially unacceptable elsewhere. In San Francisco, thousands of gays could finally step out of the closet. San Francisco has a long, long tradition from its very founding in the gold rush of being a really cosmopolitan, really free and tolerant place. I think gay people felt both they could be free sexually and be free socially as well, that they had a chance, a better chance of being accepted here. Today, more than 100,000 men live and work under the gay power flag. They do not live their social lives behind closed doors. Their social behavior. It was the wanton social life of the 1970s which led directly to this crisis. Estimates of 70 different sexual partners then for one man in less than a week. Five years ago, ten years ago, there was what gay people call the, you know, candy store. There was just lots of sex. Jim Peters will die of AIDS. We met him on the AIDS ward at San Francisco's General Hospital. This is the best ward in the hospital, and it's probably the best ward in the nation. Uh, like I said, the, the nurses are all uh, volunteer assignments, and you get that feeling. You know they want to be here to help people, and particularly AIDS patients. Nowhere is the problem more severe than at San Francisco General. There are more AIDS patients here than at any other facility in the city. 16,000 AIDS visits last year. 32,000 expected this year. It causes an enormous stress. The requirements of the healthcare system are being, are being tested, and I think the, the frightening prospect is that we think the majority of people infected will go on to get disease, and, and we're just now trying to plan for the next, for the next few years. It's not, it's not a good prospect. For all the AIDS victims, the city is the provider of last resort. We simply are coming on a situation rapidly where expecting the local tax base to handle a disaster of this intensity is just not feasible. And we need, we need outside help. The people and the system are clearly overburdened. And the worst may be yet to come. I somehow always knew I was gay. And, and to not act on that would be some sort of inner suicide, I think. San Francisco has one particular thing going for it. It has a very caring environment. Those who have been so tolerant of gays in life and love are extremely supportive on the road to death. We'll be back in just a moment. Jeep Cherokee has just been reborn. It can now be ordered with a four liter, six cylinder, 173 horsepower engine. Nothing in Cherokee's class even comes close. In fact, with this engine and a choice of two or four doors and two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, you could say nothing's in Cherokee's class. Get 2.9 financing or up to $700 cash back on select Jeep Cherokees. Gesundheit. Hey, fever, huh? Well, it's a good thing you're coming in. It's been three years. Two o'clock. Bye. 
I hope you see your doctor soon. Last year, doctors helped millions of people get fast relief from their hay fever symptoms without the degree of drowsiness often experienced with anti-allergy products. <laughs> now you can put your hay fever to sleep while you stay awake. Go see your doctor. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals. The doctor will see you now. Welcome to the new world, where all the rules have changed. A world of financial expertise to accumulate assets, finance mortgages. A world of insurance protection for lives, property, and businesses. A world of comprehensive, affordable health services. It's the world of the travelers. One of America's strongest insurance, financial, and health service experts. The travelers. You're better off under the umbrella. In other news, today a senior executive with the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team has resigned under pressure. Al Campanus began down this road to resignation when he made some remarks on Monday's Nightline, which were widely interpreted to be racist. Here's ABC's Judd Rose. This was the first strike. The show, ABC's Nightline. The subject, blacks and baseball. I, I truly believe that they may not have some of the uh, necessities to uh, be a uh, let's say a field manager or p perhaps a, a general manager. When Al Campan has tried to clarify his comments, things only got worse. Why are, are black uh, men or, or black people not good swimmers? Because they don't have the buoyancy. This was the second strike, a storm of controversy, charges of racism. Dodger blue is Dodger white. In the area of race relations and management, the Dodgers are not even in the on-deck circle. A written apology from Campanis did not silence the critics. Yes. In no way do we regard that as evening the score. There's no new game yet. And finally today, the third strike. Campanis was out. Mr. Campanis' statements on the ABC Nightline show Monday night were so far removed from the beliefs of the Dodger organization that it was impossible for him to continue in his duties. This is a very hard time, a very sad time. But even with Campanis gone, civil rights groups are demanding a closer look at racism in baseball and strict guidelines for promoting minorities. Maybe um, uh, Al, uh, in a backward way, did us a favor by bringing this out. Indeed, only three blacks have managed in the major leagues. Critics say that's not enough. The all-American game ought to be fair. It ought to be for, for all Americans at every level. Ironically, on Saturday, the Dodgers will stage a ceremony marking the 40th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the baseball color line. Today, they played in Houston, but Al Campanis had gone home. His 44 years with the Dodgers ended by a major league error. Judd Rose, ABC News, Los Angeles. In tonight's Money Matters on Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up about 11 points and the trading was active. And we have the answer this evening to a minor mystery which has been on our minds for more than a week now. It was a Japanese insurance company which paid those $40 million last week for Vincent Van Gogh's painting of sunflowers. The Yasuda Fire and Marine Insurance Company plans to hang the Van Gogh at its company museum in Tokyo. Coming up next, another celebrity candidate in California. Think of all the things you could be doing. If only you had more energy. This kind of energy comes from food by eating a well-balanced diet with vitamin B complex and biotin, the energy releasers. To be sure you're getting enough energy releasers, take Theragrand M High Potency Multivitamins with Minerals, rich in B complex and biotin. They're essential for converting food into the energy you need. So eat right and take Theragrand M from Squibb with energy releasers. Unleash your energy. Canada's personal copiers come in four colors and copy in five. Red your color. And this replaceable cartridge makes them simple, even for you. Lighten up, Jack. They are light here. Uh, what a guy. Personal copiers for every personality. I hate getting ripped off. 
for me too. <laughs> I took my car in for a muffler. Oh, you got a Midas? Oh, no, I went where they said the muffler would be eighteen dollars. But no, for your car the muffler will be more. Pay more, Simon, more. Get a Midas, Simon. Midas size your muffler because Midas gets it right the first time, and that includes the estimate. <laughs> I should have come here the first time instead of trying to cut corner. <laughs> We love visiting America. Hot dog, fried chicken, pizza. But we're glad you have Keopectate. Keopectate. To relieve diarrhea and calm cramps fast, take Keopectate tablet formula. The diarrhea is specialist. Tonight on Nightline, a vice president of the Dodgers has resigned after racial remarks he made Monday on Nightline. Ted Koppel talks with Peter Uberoff and Reggie Jackson tonight. Yesterday, we reported on some elections in progress. Here are the results. In Chicago, Harold Washington has won re-election. He becomes the first two-term mayor in the city since Richard Daley. And here in San Francisco, the Democrat Nancy Pelosi defeated Harry Britt, a city supervisor who is gay. That was a special election to fill the congressional seat of the late Sala Burton. Pelosi is now favored to win a June runoff election against a Republican challenger. Finally, this evening, we have a report on an entertainer who doesn't seem all that happy with either being out of the spotlight or with the quality of government where he lives. The solution, not for the first time, seems to be get into politics. ABC's Gary Shepard is in Palm Springs, California. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. It was last April that movie star Clint Eastwood was sworn in as mayor of Carmel, California, after winning a landslide election that drew media coverage from all over the world. You know, California resort cities have a fierce rivalry, so not to be outdone by Carmel, Palm Springs has jumped into the celebrity mayor's sweepstakes. Only the candidate here fights with pasta instead of a pistol, and Dirty Harry, he's not. I am throwing my hat in the ring. I'm going to run for, for the mayor of Palm Springs. Sonny Bono running for mayor. <laughs> I think that he'll turn the town upside down and very rock and roll. I think it's a little funny. He doesn't seem like a politician. If Clint Eastwood can do it, Sonny Bono can do it. Do you see yourself as, as the, the next Clint Eastwood? I see myself as the next Sonny Bono. <laughs> Sonny has been getting plenty of encouragement from customers at the Italian restaurant he opened in Palm Springs last year. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But not from the current mayor of Palm Springs, Frank Bogert. We caught up with him at a groundbreaking, and he says Sonny has no qualifications whatsoever. I'm not saying that Sonny is a dumb guy or anything. He's a nice little guy. Most people still remember Bono from his hit TV show during the 1970s. Tonight, people are really going to know I'm here. Yeah, they're going to know you're here. You just ate a garlic pizza. <laughs> Sonny and Sherry was a clown then. I'm sure he still is. But the entertainer says he's definitely not clowning around in politics. He's running for mayor because the town needs new direction, new energy. And he already has a campaign slogan. Let's put the spring back in palm. Don't even bother to ask about the campaign song. Gary Shepard, ABC News, Palm Springs, California. That's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night from San Francisco. From ABC, this has been World News Tonight with Peter Jennings from San Francisco. The New York Post calls it a top quality drama series featuring an impeccable ensemble. Definitely a superior show, says the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. And UPI calls it television at its finest. The one they're all talking about, Mariah. Tonight. An important announcement from Beeman Pepsi. Every time you pick up Pepsi between now and April 18th, pick up an entry blank for the second Pepsi Drive-Away Sweepstakes and send it in. We're awarding two grand prizes in the local Beeman franchise area only. Two Mitsubishi Starion ESIR sports cars, each valued at about $19,000. See the Starion at Beeman Mitsubishi and pick up your entry blanks wherever Pepsi is sold and send them in. You have an excellent chance to win. Entries must be received by April 18th. If you love your pet, watch this. We'll prove that you can keep fleas and ticks off your dog or cat with Hart's Blockade. Fleas are all over this untreated lab dish. We've sprayed the left side of this dish with Hart's Blockade, while the right side remains untreated. Watch how Blockade repels...